All right, hey guys, and welcome to this Lightroom tutorial. Uh, today we're gonna be transforming this picture right here into something that looks a little bit like this. And yeah, let's just dive right into this. All right, so first things first, when editing any photo, I go to the crop tool and I try to adjust the crop the way that I want. Uh, for Instagram, it is a 4x5 crop, but I honestly stopped doing that because you can just directly crop in the app itself. So I just keep it the original size. Um, I don't do, I don't want to do anything too dramatic here. I just want to make sure that the streetcar is centered. And yep, there you go. That's pretty much all there is to it when it comes to straightening. You can come here to the... Uh, to the angle and just hit auto and it'll try to uh, automatically level your image you can actually do that so i'm just gonna keep it at 0 0.03 all right next thing uh, we go here to the basic adjustments where you can control the temperature the exposure and all the tone and the presence and everything uh, first thing here is this was shot obviously during a cold night so i usually bring the temperature down but obviously in this case it is already at 3850 so I think that's more than enough for now I'm not gonna touch this if I need to touch it later on I'll do that later on I'll fix it uh, first thing the exposure I think the exposure is pretty fine this was shot at 90 mil at f2 at 3200 you can look at the graph here mostly you want the graph to be flat that's what everyone usually says but I don't want things to be this bright so I'm gonna leave the exposure for now till later on Let's just go to the highlights. So first things first, I don't want the highlights to be this bright, so I'm gonna tone things down a bit to around, uh, let's say 75. I wanna give this uh, like a nice dark moody look, and I wanna emphasize this light here that's hitting the streetcar. And I want everything else to be kind of dark, right? I don't, want, I don't want the focus to be on the people over here. I don't want the focus to be on, on the trees. I don't want the focus to be anywhere, but, the streetcar and this light pointing towards it. Uh, next thing, I'm gonna bump the shadows a bit because it's a bit too dark in the darkest parts. So I'm gonna go to say 75. <sighs> yeah, 75 seems fine. Uh, for the whites, also I don't want any like too bright white parts. So I might just so like. I don't want this to happen. This makes your image like completely broken. So I'm just gonna tone it down to about minus 12, minus 13. I think that's pretty good. Uh, for the blacks also, I don't wanna drop the blacks down because that, that's gonna add a lot of contrast, which is something that I don't wanna do with by toning down the blacks. That's something I might do later on with the contrast and the tone curve down here. So for the blacks, I usually, uh, for these snowy night photos, I just go up say around 20 25 sounds pretty good all right so for the texture clarity and dehaze um i don't want to dehaze anything at this point there's a lot of snow like particles falling down these are also things i want to emphasize uh so one thing i will do is i'm gonna bump the clarity up to 30 Five forty around this area so and as you can see like when you bump up the clarity you can start to see those like particles and things become a bit sharper you don't want to overdo it and go all the way up like some people do so definitely don't do that just make it nice 35 40 I don't usually try not to go above 40 because it becomes really fake at that point um, for the vibrance so the vibrance is kind of similar to the saturation but it's like a to like a softer saturation it, it doesn't completely break your image so for uh for this vibrance here i'm just gonna go to 45 uh yeah just like 40 45 and you can see the sprints can completely unsaturate your image or you can completely well saturate it uh let's go to 45 and usually when i bump up the vibrance i go down with the saturation but in this case, I'm gonna go up a bit because I tried to go down. I thought it was a bit too mute, like it was too gray. And because it's snowing, things are already too gray. So I'll just go up to like plus 10. All right, yep, so 
And that's pretty much it for the basic adjustments for now. Um, I might come back to the contrast and exposure later on or the temperature, but for now, this is exactly what I need for my basic adjustments. Next, the tone curve. If you don't know what the turn tone curve does, it, it's a very powerful tool. It's a, there's a lot of other videos that explain it way properly. Uh, and I don't have enough time to explain everything here. So I'm just going to go briefly through it. Uh, over here, you can control your uh, whitest white parts of the image and your darkest dark parts. So here you have your shadows, your mid-tones, and your highlights. Your highlights are basically your, the brightest parts of the image. And your mid-tones are basically your points uh, uh, or pixels that are basically in the middle between dark and like between the darkest dark and the lightest light. And you have your shadows over here, which are your dark parts in the image, which basically are what we adjusted here. And you, and you can see here, like when you change your shadows, you can see this part over here shift. So this makes things, because we just lowered the shadows, things are much darker now, so this goes down. So usually what everyone does is basically a simple S curve to uh, add some contrast to your image and that's exactly what I'm gonna do here in this case like I just I don't want things to be exaggerated too much so I'm just gonna uh, so I'm just gonna go up on the highlights and I'm gonna bring this down at a point here you can add points all over the curve by the way and if you add a point and you hold alt and you go up and down you get this fine granular change all right so uh, I'm going to add a point here to the midtones, and I'm going to add a point here to the shadows and I'm going to pull on that down a bit and I want to move this point up. So this point basically means that there aren't any, when it's at zero zero it basically means there are dark points that are completely black. Uh, moving this point up means that there aren't any more points that are completely black and this is what people usually do before on Instagram when you when they get that filmic look they just go up here and they well you just you start to not have any black parts here so the blacks you see that there aren't any blacks anymore all right so uh, I'm just gonna go up a bit on here and I'm just gonna go a bit down on the shadows and yeah that seems pretty good I'm not going to touch the red channel, green channel, or blue channel, but basically, if a quick rundown what this does, if you go to the blue channel and you pull this up, you're just adding blues to the shadows. If you go to the red channel and you bump this up, you're adding reds to the highlights, or you add some greens to the highlights if you go down. Uh, these are very powerful. I wouldn't play too much with these unless you know exactly what you're doing. So yeah, for now, this is exactly what I need. And on to the U saturation and luminance. Up next, the greens. I just, I'm just gonna go down with the greens and move those to yellow. I, I don't, I just don't wanna get rid of all the greens. I don't want any greens to be in the image, to be honest. Um, so I'll just move the green to the yellow. Uh, I'll move the blues to the teals. So around minus 23, 21. And I'll move the purples, even though there aren't any purples, as you can see. But if there, just in case there's anything, I'll just move them back to the purple. Uh, magentas also, there's nothing, so it doesn't really matter. But for the saturation, so because it is a cold, wintry, moody image, I don't want this much saturation to be in the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna tone down, honestly, almost everything. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to tone down everything, to be honest. I'll just... Alright, so you can see the image has now completely been toned down, which is completely fine. We're going to fix that later on with our local adjustments. Up next, color grading. So color grading lets you add your own personal touch to the highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. Uh, what you can do is basically you can add any color to the shadows, mid-tones, or highlights. So you can add a lot, some yellow to the shadows. And if you just hit this button here, you can bump up your saturation and you can see all your shadows have been turned to, to orange. 
Yeah, so in, in my case, I just want to uh, add some uh, blues to the shadows, so 220 and around 14. And I'm going to do the same thing to the highlights, even though usually people add some uh, oranges into the highlights, but because it's a wintry night and cold image, I'm going to add also blues to the uh, to the highlights as well. So 22, uh, sorry, 220 and also 14. Uh, I might add some vignette to focus the viewer's attention towards the streetcar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and add a vignette of around minus 20. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So as you can see, like if you go to the right you add a white vignette if you go to the left you add a darker vignette uh, I usually go around minus 20 just to focus the viewers attention on the streetcar itself that basically concludes all the basic adjustments so now is where the fun happens and we start working with masking so with the new Lightroom update uh, for 2022 they've added a lot of options for masking so now you can mask subject sky uh, the background you can select objects which you can just basically draw around any object you want and then automatically detect the object for you and it will draw a mask um, you can uh, make normal brushes radial gradients like we used to in the past so for the first mask that I want to draw is I'm gonna take the objects and I'm gonna make the brush bigger by increasing the size and I'm gonna draw a mask around the streetcar the front of the streetcar right here and Lightroom should should technically detect the streetcar which is yeah it did a pretty good job um, I mean it's not the, the best mask but it's a pretty good job okay so for the first object um, I'm gonna bump up the shadows to around 30 just so we can make the subject pop a little bit more and I'm gonna increase the clarity a bit so I'm gonna bump this up to around 63 uh, this is gonna help bring out the uh, snow particles or the snowflakes around the streetcar and it's just gonna make the subject pop out a little bit more uh, and this will help divert the viewers attention towards the subject itself uh, I'm also going to increase the sharpness, that's pretty okay, and the saturation to around 5. The next mask that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first mask, which is basically the streetcar, I'm going to right click, duplicate and invert mask, and this is going to select everything around the streetcar. Uh, this is a pretty cool trick, so because it's a snowy scenery obviously I'm gonna make try to make this colder so I'm gonna go to around minus 20 and it's gonna just make everything a little bit more blue uh, I'm gonna drop the exposure also a bit so you can drop it all the way down and add a lot of more for uh, a lot more focus on your subject but I'm not gonna go that far I just go to around like 0 0.09 just to give it a bit more pop uh, for the highlights, also I want to drop down the highlights to let's say minus 30 to add more focus towards the subject and uh, pretty much that's all I want to do with everything other than the streetcar itself. So next up, uh, I'm just going to add a radial gradient to the light here that's coming off the uh, streetcar's lights. Uh, I'm just going to increase the highlights to around 80. Uh, I'm gonna also increase the shadows to around 60, 60 is fine. I'm also gonna add a bit of texture to make the train and the snow on the ground uh, pop off a little bit more. And I'm gonna add uh, a bit of saturation just to make that color a little more saturated. I'm also gonna add a linear gradient and if you hold the shift key it lets you make a straight uh, straight uh, linear gradient. If you don't want to make a straight one, you can just uh, 
click here, add a linear gradient without holding shift and you can add it in any direction you want. So I'm just gonna add a linear gradient to the lower part over here and I'm gonna darken this a bit so I can direct the user's attention towards the streetcar itself. So I'm just gonna drop the exposure here, turn around minus 0.4 and also drop the shadows to like minus 27. And that is pretty much it for this adjustment. I want to add more focus on the guy in the streetcar itself, so the, the man right here. So what I'm going to do is also I'm going to make another uh, radial gradient. And don't be afraid to use all these masks. You can use these masks as much as you want. You can control your light. You can direct the user's attention to wherever you want. So this is a very powerful tool and I highly suggest you use it as much as you can. So you take this radial gradient, uh, I'm just going to draw a circle over here around the guy. I'm just going to bump up the highlights to around 25 and I'm going to increase the saturation to 30. 30 is, is perfect. Alright, awesome. I said in the beginning of the video that I want to emphasize this light here hitting the streetcar itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a radial gradient and I'm going to rotate it a bit and make it come from the light itself. And I'm just going to increase the highlights as much as I can to let's say 70. Yeah, 70 seems perfect next up i also want to increase the highlights on these lights here so one two three four five six seven i want these lights to be a little bit brighter so what i'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a radiant gradient right here and i'm just gonna increase the highlights One thing I really want to do is I want to increase the saturation on this sign right here and I want to make this uh, bluer because obviously it's a snow scene I want things to be uh, cold so this white light isn't working for me so I'm just gonna make a, another radial gradient right here on this light I'm just gonna bring down the, the temperature and I'm just gonna make this size here and make another radial gradient over this sign here that tells you where you're going and just increase the saturation to let's say 30. All right and that does it for the local adjustment. I said before that I'm, I'm gonna come back to the contrast so I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast to this image so going back here to the contrast I'm just gonna crank this up to around 35 just to emphasize and darken the darkest parts and just emphasize, uh, emphasize the light hitting the streetcar over here. So we're almost done with this image. The final thing that I usually do is some cleaning up. Uh, if you click here on your healing tool, uh, you can go to the content where heal and you can start removing things that you believe are too, distract too distracting in the image. And yeah, that is our image. So we started from here and we ended up here. And yeah, so just to, just a quick recap, uh, use your masking tools. They are very, very, very powerful. And the biggest tip that I can give you is selecting your subject and in the next mask, duplicating and inverting it and just working with the inverted part by decreasing the exposure to add more focus on your subject, maybe uh, lowering the temperature to make things around colder. But yeah, that's it guys. Um, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something new. And if you like this video, consider liking. If you want to subscribe, it's up to you. You can subscribe. Thank you for watching and uh, have a good one. Bye.